Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to What The Fuck News. My name is Destry and I like to cosplay anime characters. And you're probably like, oh Destry, you would play a great Sebastian from Black Butler. Sorry, African American Butler, my bad. You could play a great L from Death Note. Well thanks for that, but I was thinking more along the lines of... What in the fuck was that? I'll tell you what that was. That was me saying, you better watch out, Jessica Negri. You better watch out, Allison Tabitha. Because there's a new queen in town. No, stop. Stop it. Get some help. But welcome back to What The Fuck News, where we talk about the super weird ass news that you might have missed in the last couple of weeks. Before we get into that, guys, I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Square Spaasi. That is not how you pronounce that. Whether you're an experienced web designer or just starting out, make your website with Squarespace. I recently just finished my own website that only took me a couple of days using Squarespace all-in-one, easy-to-use platform. It's so easy, you're gonna be like, this is the wrong button. I thought this was the easy button, the, not the, okay. Just imagine that this said that was easy, not nut. Better yet, your website's gonna look so sweet, you're gonna nut. Boom, got it. Why do I have this? I do not know. So if you'd like to make your own beautiful website, make sure to start a free trial over at squarespace.com slash captaindestes for 10% off your first purchase. Again, that is squarespace.com slash c-a-p-n-d-e-s-d-e-s. -E -E uh, also, my website is up right now. You can go check it out. Um, there's some pretty good stuff on there, except for this. Don't look at this. This is, this is horrible. Whatever you do, do not go to destrysmith.com slash media, I implore you. Speaking of horrible cosplay, so if you didn't know, this last weekend was San Diego Comic Con where they show off all of the newest movies and TV shows and just everything going on in the comic industry. And of the things that I was most excited about this year, we had the announcement for the newest season of Star Wars Clone Wars, which if you've not seen, definitely go watch it. I couldn't recommend it more. There was the trailer for the newest Walking Dead season, the trailer for Shazam, which unfortunately is not a reboot of the movie with Shaq as a genie. I know how much we've all been wanting that and asking for that every year, but that's actually Kazam, fantastic movie though, but Shazam looks, you know, whatever, it's a DC movie. Regardless, I tried to ask Shaq if he was going to be involved in this movie and uh, he didn't reply, so I can only assume that he's busy working on it right now. We also got the trailer for Aquaman finally, which uh, looks actually pretty good. I don't want to jinx it because, you know, DC's been really hit or miss lately. Like, will this be a Wonder Woman or will this be a Suicide Squad? I am not someone who is loved. I'm an idea. God, I hope not. But hands down, the best part about Comic-Con this year was all of the people at the event dressed up as their favorite fictional characters. And of some of the best cosplays this year, we had a fantastic Wonder Woman. <sighs> By the way, I do this weird breath thing whenever I see something I think is sexy, so just wanted to let you know before we get into this in case you're wondering what that is. So anyways, we have a really great Baymax from Big Hero 6. I don't remember a guy with an insanely creepy smile being inside of him in the movie, but you know, I guess I missed that part. There was an insanely cute Carl and Ellie cosplay from Up, and Ash Ketchum and Jesse from Pokemon. Uh, someone dressed up as a glove with Skittles on it? I don't really get it. I mean, I, I'm just kidding. Don't get mad at me. Uh, I heard if someone snaps their finger with this glove on, though, I won't feel so good, Mr. Stark. Someone dressed up as the Night King star of the movie Finding Viserion. That's a Game of Thrones joke. Not in cosplay, but it was really cool to see the real Donald Trump show up. You know, showing his support and stuff. Oh wow, there he is. Great to see him at an event where he's not committing acts of treason. Someone showed up in a cosplay of one of my favorite characters from Hellboy 2. And if you ever wanted to know what the Silver Surfer's dick looks like, here's that. <laughs> oh, too sexy. Not, not. And unfortunately, I did not get to attend Comic-Con this year because I don't have a fucking life. However, we do have a man on the street who is going to summarize his experience at Comic-Con as a What the Fuck News exclusive. Chase? There are so many boobs. Riveting stuff. Journalism at its finest right there. But the other big story to come out of Comic-Con this weekend was the news that Disney fired Guardians of the Galaxy writer and director James Gunn. And while he's most notably known for his first two installments of the Marvel franchise, even more noteworthy is his writing on the far more superior movies Scooby-Doo and Scooby-Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed. Wow, why would you fire the guy that wrote the amazing line, Hey, I can look at myself naked. Just incredible. But Gunn was fired after some offensive tweets that he posted from 2008 to 2012 resurfaced online, which apparently Disney was not too fond of. Of some of the worst of his tweets, which Gunn claims were just jokes that he took too far, were The Expendables was so manly, I fucked the shit out of the little pussy boy next to me. The boys are back in town. This hotel shower is the weakest ever. Felt like a three-year-old was peeing on my head. Just made a joke about ass raping my friend when she was asleep. Wow, thanks James Gunn. There goes the monetization for this video. Who am I kidding? YouTube demonetized it as soon as they saw my face. Hey guys, what's up? Nope. 
So obviously a lot of people were rightfully upset by the tweets, to which James Gunn issued an official statement saying, Many people who have followed my career know that when I started, I viewed myself as a provocateur, making movies and telling jokes that were outrageous and taboo. As I've discussed publicly many times, as I've developed as a person, so has my work and my humor. It's not to say I'm better, but I'm very, very different than I was a few years ago. Today I try to root my work in love and connection and less in anger. My days of saying something just because it's shocking and trying to get a reaction are over. Despite the apology, Disney still stood with their decision in firing him, to which nearly every leading cast member of the Guardians of the Galaxy films has something to say in defense of James Gunn. And obviously James Gunn isn't the first person to be fired because of tweets or social media interactions and probably won't be the last one, but honestly we live in an era that hasn't ever been experienced in human history where everyone's life is public and open to everyone else. And that something stupid or asinine that you say 10 plus years ago can still haunt you. And I'm not defending what James Gunn said, like obviously what he said was still pretty horrible even if it was a joke. I'm just saying like I personally understand the whole shock humor and trying to be edgy, like that was practically all my channel used to be. And not just me, I mean I hate to shine light on the disgusting rumor of the whole Shane Dawson pedophilia thing again, but that all started because Shane made some offensive edgy jokes that he thought were funny at the time that he wishes he could take back. So I guess since he won't be returning to Guardians of the Galaxy 3, there's no time like the present for him to return to his true calling, Scooby-Doo 3. I want it! Give it to me! What are you doing, James? <laughs> So just in case I'm ever more than just a YouTube person and I could potentially get fired because of all the dumb shit that I used to say, let's go through my old tweets and see what I might have to apologize for. Okay, so first I want to apologize. Uh, a lot of these are crass and just plain insensitive. Starting with my earliest tweet in 2009, I like ravioli. <laughs> How could you, Destry? Everyone knows lasagna is superior. Shaved my armpits. Aw uh, yeah, I feel like a seal. I'm very, very sorry for this tweet. Seals are people too, I was I was out of line. I feel like in 2009 I just had no idea what to tweet because my life was so boring. Case in point, mmm, soft lips. Damn yeah, gotta love chapstick. Who cares? <laughs> Gotta go check the P.O. box, get a 12 pack of monster, and pee on some villagers. Hey! This tweet is insensitive. Many villagers get peed on a day. It's a big deal. I'm so sorry I was out of line. Here's one with no context. Anyone down for sexting? And then I followed it up with, oh my bad, I meant texting. Damn, Destry, save some pussy for the rest of us. <laughs> I'll have you know that no one texted me or sexted me, so this this didn't work at all. This one's good. April 2010, I tweeted, why does YouTube blow so hard now? Ha! <laughs> what a naive boy, if only you knew. I don't like my nipples being touched, in all caps. That's still true, but I don't know why I needed to tell my followers about that. I'm very sorry for that tweet. It was it was too much information. I, I was way out of line. Every YouTuber I met was cooler than me. Oh well, one day I'll have a mustache and I'll be cooler. <laughs> <laughs> we sure showed them. I knocked a bitch up, yo. I'm honestly still trying to figure out what this tweet was. Do I have a child I don't know about? What the fuck? In 2011, I tweeted, I love whores. Bah ha 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 ha. I'm very sorry for that tweet. I, I love everyone equally and this was massively insensitive. If you don't love the movie Short Circuit, then fuck you. <laughs> Man, that falcon from Mulan is a dick, right? <laughs> uh, this one, no context. Manscaping is the direct way to a woman's heart. Was a tweet to Shane and I wonder why he never wanted to do another collab with me. I'm very sorry for this tweet. Sometimes women prefer men with- I'm trying to outbid this fucker on eBay. So I bid $100 on a Transformers poster. Still got it. Uh, oh, periods. They're so weird. I I'm very sorry. Periods are a natural part of a woman's life. In 2012, I grew up a little bit and started getting my act together, started making better life choices and better jokes. Starting with, I wonder if Twitter has a sensitive spot called the Twitteress. <laughs> Oh my god. I got a bachelor's degree in baby making. Winky face, bow chicka chicka. Why don't I tweet this? I'm tired of extra virgin olive oil. Can someone hook me up with some obscenely slutty olive oil? Hashtag legalize meth. That's it. Yeah, there had to be a story for that one. <laughs> I call masturbation pulling an Anakin Skywalker because of all the younglings I'm killing. Well, hey, Order 66 is no laughing matter. I'm, I'm very sorry. I feel like if there was a fanny pack in the cornucopia of the Hunger Games, no one would even touch it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I stand by this one. This That's a quality tweet right there. Well, as much as I tried to dig up dirt about myself, it seems that my Twitter in my past used to just be me comparing smells around the house, magic cards, and food. Some tweets about my current relationship. That 
that was that was a popular one. And also my lack of sleep. And it's not to say that my current tweets are any better. It's just that I try not to tweet as much anymore because of that reason. Next in what the fuck news. So in the wake of the whole Tanacon thing that we talked about last time, it seems like YouTubers have not learned their lesson about throwing dumbass events that are bound to fail. As yet another YouTuber was in the news for doing exactly that. As YouTuber Yousef Ericat, known for his stage pranks on his channel FuzzyTube, tried to organize a concert in less than five days. How'd that go, you asked? Holy shit. The event, which he called Hate Dies, Love Arrives, was advertised as being bigger than Coachella, free, would be the highest viewed stream in the world and would feature famous rappers like Drake and Snoop Dogg. Anyways, Drake, I'm trying to find you because I want to invite you to my July 15th show tomorrow. Yo, Drake. I literally look like a crazy person right now because I'm outside of the place that you're at. Don't ask me how I found it, bruh. It was supposed to take place in the Greek Theater in Los Angeles on July 15th, and thousands of people did in fact show up to the event, but we're disappointed to find out that not only did Drake not make it to the event, but confirmed that he never was booked to play the venue, nor did he know who FouseyTube was, despite him being the poster for practically any promotion for the event. In fact, the actual lineup turned out to be small local rappers and YouTubers that Fousey knew, and my god, if you're wondering how lit the venue was, I think this clip really sums up the excitement of the crowd. Oh god, that is painful. I mean, that, that can't be the only person performing, right? Oh no, there's more. When the energy was at its lowest, it was saved by a dude in a man bun who hyped the crowd with just a few short, shrill sounds. Oh! Nothing gets a crowd going like... Everyone was jumping after that. They got really into it. And if that first woo didn't get up, the second and the third and the fourth definitely did. But debatably worse than the performance was the fact that a bomb threat was later called in at the event, which inevitably caused the bomb squad to show up and evacuate the 1,500 people into the parking lot. Fuzzy then took it upon himself to stand in front of the crowd and deliver a speech on mental health and peace, as well as how he met Drake while he stripped down into a wife beater and stood on a guy's car who wanted to leave. Yeah, apparently this is something I didn't know, but that was actually an Uber driver that he hired, that he paid money to so that he could stand on his car, and that guy actually got fired. So that's, that's good, I guess. But as far as YouTube's reaction to the event failing, he claims that it was supposed to happen this way and that it was God's plan. Listen, I promise, I know people said I sounded crazy, but if God's message makes me sound crazy, then I am crazy. Later on the No Jumper podcast that was supposed to be between Shane Dawson and the host, Tube showed up and crashed the podcast while bragging even more about his failed event. This time claiming that his interaction with Drake wasn't that he met him, but that they touched noses? I don't know. I don't know. I'm this close to Drake. As soon as Drake moves and makes eye contact with me and I stare at him, he goes, brother, take my number. I'll tell you all the details tomorrow. So I you said, didn't meet Drake, he just looked at you. Part of me thinks that this didn't even happen. Like, just the way that he's bragging about it makes it seem like they haven't even been in the same room. And even if Drake was in the same state as this dude, he'd be like, yo, me and Drake, so tight. We practically grew up together. He was beside me. When I was born, we were once one person. But much like Kami and Piccolo from Dragon Ball Z, we split up. And I am the way shittier, less talented version of Drake. And the whole podcast is really fucking weird, but the best part has to be Shane's awkward silence and glances that say, get me the fuck out of here. Later on, Sam Pepper shows up and Fuzzy says this. You're beta as fuck. I'm an alpha. I'm a lion. I'm sorry, did he just call himself a lion? I'm a lion. Oh, so you're an endangered animal and like your channel will probably go extinct one day? That sucks, man. <laughs> But honestly, on the whole Drake thing, you can't just say someone's gonna show up somewhere and think that that's the truth. I would know. I've been trying to get Juno Temple in my videos for years. Literally years. But I can't just be like, yo, what's up, guys? I'm having a slumber party next week. Mm, Karen Gillan, Juno Temple, Daisy Ridley. We're gonna play Twister, and we're gonna watch The Ridiculous Six. It's gonna be lit. I'll see you guys there. As much as I wish that were true, I'm rooted in reality, and I know that not only am I not gonna watch fucking horrible Adam Sandler movies with them, but I'm probably also never gonna meet them, and that my life is sad. But that's fine. Like a normal person, I accept it and I cry myself to sleep only one night of the week. So I guess the moral of the story is, for the love of God, can we stop doing fucking YouTube events? Or at least can we stop having fucking idiots do them? Because of this shit, pretty soon when I introduce myself as a YouTuber, it's gonna be a bad thing. Like, hi, I'm Destry, I make YouTube videos. Oh no, I'm so sorry. Should you be out here alone? Where's your parents? Do you need us to call someone for you? What are you talking? I'm 27. Oh, this one can talk and count. Wow. Wow, look at that. Should you be wearing a helmet? Here, sweetie, put this on. You're a danger to yourself and everyone around you. No, 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 thanks. Shh, you put that on. There you go. Okay, yeah, that looks really good. Well, don't get too close, Timmy. He might use you for clickbait. And last of what the fuck news, a man was in the news this last week after he surgically removed his penis.
penis because it was interfering with his tattoo's aesthetic look. What the f Fuck. Why? H how do you pee? I have so many questions. But yes, the now 32-year-old Russian native Adam Curlykale, who got his first tattoo when he was 20, is now almost completely covered in tattoos, and I don't mean like they're all over, I mean his entire skin is tattooed black. Sorry, African-American. Adam says that the reason he started tattooing himself was because of his cancer diagnosis when he was 22, which he eventually beat, but not after leaving him feeling sickly, pale, and depressed. He then started tattooing himself as a way to cover up the blemishes caused by the after effects of the cancer, but fell in love when he saw the results saying, I designed my tattoos because it's my body. I have a specific vision for myself and I take it step by step. Tattoos allowed me to rediscover myself again. I became beautiful to myself. So that I agree. I think it's awesome that he's happy with himself. Like, He's free to do whatever he wants to his body and his money. So if he wants to look like the evil version of the Monopoly guy, who are we to judge? If he wants to turn himself into the real life Ganondorf from The Legend of Zelda, let him do his thing. But why the dick, man? Who's just like, oh, you know what? I'm not using this thing. Let me just, there we go. <sighs> it was said that he not only removed his penis and testicles entirely, but also his nipples, which he plans to cover entirely with tattoos. Okay, am I the only one wondering what that looks like? Like, is it flatter than Nebraska? Or did he like put like a fucking metal claw arm that can grab on to shit? I, I don't know. Adam also says that he knows his look isn't for everyone and might affect his employment in the future. If his current job as an alternative model, a self-proclaimed YouTuber, a tattoo artist, and a psychologist don't work out, saying, no matter what, it makes me happy and that's all that matters. I'll die fulfilled as someone who wasn't afraid to take chances. As someone who lived, regardless of other people's opinions, but in harmony with himself. I mean, yeah, okay. But why the dick, man? <laughs> this guy's actually super inspiring. I mean, I'm not gonna cut what little dick I have off, but he definitely sends a positive message. Like, it actually upset me that so many people were commenting on this story and saying that he was, like, sick and had, like, mental health issues. And, well, yeah, it's a bit odd that he looks like this and cut off his own dick, but I haven't seen a single post that made me believe that he wasn't right in the head. Which is hard to admit, because he cut off his own dick on purpose. <laughs> and as far as him being a YouTuber, I, I mean, I don't watch his videos because they're in a different language, but I would rather this guy be a famous YouTuber than the trash we have now. Can we just trade the Paul brothers for this guy? That'd be cool. <laughs> Seriously, if this guy ever wants to collab, I will make that happen. Anyways, guys, that is it for this episode of What The Fuck News. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give this video a like and also subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell for more videos. Speaking of, it would mean a lot to me if you guys went and checked out my newest vlog series about me and my friends choosing each other's outfits. It's part of a three-part series that I I am just super proud of, and uh, it's probably some of the best editing I've ever done, some of the best videos I feel I've ever made. You're, you're not gonna be happy. Oh Jesus, what now? Oh no. Don't you, don't you make me wear that. You get out of here. I am not here. going to wear a sweater vest. But yeah, part three will be up. Um, if you haven't seen the first two parts, definitely go check them out right now, and uh, I'm just really excited for you guys to see the finale of the series. Psst, I might sing Jake Paul in it. I didn't tell you that, shh. That's it guys, I will see you next time for another What The Fuck News. Thanks for watching, and fair wins.